So, VPF on block devices. Um, I always wanted to have some mechanism to do an efficient error injection in block device or in block IO in general. Because the um, block layer has so many error paths which are really, really, really hard to trigger as they typically rely on things going gravely wrong and that's the one thing which you try to avoid in the block layer. And it's typically, the error paths, and paths are typically triggered when there is a hardware issue which again is really hard to trigger if you don't have any hardware error injection stored. So, um, so the idea is whether we can't, or to investigate whether we can't use BPF on block devices. The challenge here is that um, we ha always have to cover it both ways because block device or block IO is essentially um, a, a command reply structure. So any command we ever send will have to be returned. So if we do an error injection, that error injection would need to, well, actually terminate the command. It can't just modify something and then hope for the best. But we also might, might be needing to uh, complete the command from within the BPF. So, and um, yeah, no, the question is, so first question is, do we want to do something like this? Is there is it just me who sees the value, or is that something which is, uh, is of general interest? So I, I definitely looked into this, and I, I had mentioned in the, as part of a, a topic as well, sca scaling error injection for block NFS too. So yeah. I'm, I'm really interested in this too. Uh, I did kind of do a bit of the homework here on looking into the BPF uh, methodology of doing error injection, and um, let's see. Um, it was further generalized. Um, from K probes and uh, yeah. all one really needs is just to sprinkle the allow error injection, right? So have you guys used that? Uh, that, that that's kind of like where I was uh, going. Um, it makes it much easier um, instead of having a kernel BPF program to load a BPF file, for instance. Um, so it seems much easier to use that given that um, you basically just have to echo you know things you know on as root instead of actually compiling you know some sort of program loading it. Um, now there are some caveats with this though. One of them is that you essentially are limited to only uh, that uh, macro and where it is that you're basically adding it. Right. So um, a, a while ago I basically did this for the whole uh, add disk uh, shuffling you know mm -hmm. for adding error handling for that. Um, the big question that I had was like, all right, shouldn't we be adding error injection there now that we're actually error, you know, adding, re returning errors there? Um, so the first path, of course, was just sprinkling the, the, you know, error handling the old way, right? But you know, of course, that doesn't scale because then we would have to be adding sprinkles of code everywhere we where we want to check. If we do uh, the BPF method, you basically are compiling stuff, right? Um, but, you know, the alternative, of course, is th that I'm, I'm indicating is this macro, and the limit to that is basically now you have to go and add this to every single function that you're basically, yeah. um, you know, in, in enabling dynamic tracing. But I think that that might be easier um, because it's either one or the other, right? You either do this with a program or you're basically just sprinkling the macros. Uh, I didn't get any feedback on that, so uh, I, I, I'm personally a big advocate of this. Um, so I, 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 I think that right now the only thing that we do have that's like clean is that macro. Yeah. Um, so, but this is something I really don't like. Why? Because um, having to sprinkle code with, uh, at positions where we want to do error injection. Oh, no, 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 um, that, that's not, that's not right. it, right? I, I definitely agree with you. We, we had reviewed this, right, a, a long time ago and, and I looked into that and I agree with you. Um, there is a, a, an alternative that basically is just a macro called allow error injection. Uh, have you looked at that by any chance? Um, unfortunately not, no. Uh, so pretty much um, this was added after the BPF got support for doing error injection. So what this does is basically instead of you having to load a BPF program, you basically just sprinkle this macro mm -hmm. at the end, kind of like an export symbol. Mm -hmm. So when you want to now uh, allow dynamic tracing, all you have to do is basically just add a macro at the end of the function, kind of like an ex export symbol. And if you do that, you're basically allowing the kernel now to do uh, dynamic error injection using debug FS. 
So all you have to do now is just go through debug a pass, echo a few things, and then enable it. Yes, but that, again, would mean you have to sprinkle each and every function. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, that, so, that and that is precise. Uh, uh, that is a lot of churn. And yes. the thing is, what I found during long and bitter experience, the errors occur there where you do not expect them. Can you say that again? The errors, the errors occur there at that position where you do not expect them. Catching expected errors is trivial, but things go wrong when you have an error which you do not expect because well, that's when things go wrong. And hardware has a habit of doing precisely that that suddenly, whatever, a register isn't available, vanished in, into thin air, returns weird stuff, or just kills the HB altogether, something like that. And um, these kind of things are, well, out of nature. Uh, naturally, you can't protect it against it, because that would mean you would expect it, but you can't really expect it, because you don't know what's, what's going to happen. So sprinkle things in the code amounts to the first thing that we know, all right, at this position something will happen, so I better add, I better add a statement that I can trace it. But the point is we don't know where this will happen, which is why I vastly prefer the eBPF approach, which means that it we can potentially attach it to each and every function without having to change much in the code. I, I agree completely, but uh, I'm not sure we have uh, the ability to do that right now, do we? That is why we're here, right? <laughs> Of course we don't have the ability. If we had, we don't have, wouldn't have this talk, right? Um, agreed, I mean, agreed. yes. And so the, um, so doing error injection is actually is one thing, which is okay, yes, you can do. But the other possibility here is that you might be able to actually steer IO with eBPF. No. All right, well, okay. <laughs> Okay, tell me why, or tell me why not. N that is not an argument. Get the microphone, Christoph, please. So uh, we can't hear Christoph well because he's not using a microphone, but he loves the idea of using BPF to steer I.O. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll go ahead and favor. implement it. Yep. So, um, but in, in all seriousness, could you describe what you actually hope to accomplish with BPF right. steering? Yes, so uh, that is, um, there had been an attempt from a company called VM for doing precisely that, meaning steering I.O. to some other things. This ended up to become some block layer thing, stuff, um, which essentially, well, allowed you to redirect I.O. That's still very vague. What it's do you mean? No, no, no. So, and they, they uh, of course it's very vague. So, they used that for their, um, actually for backup, because they wanted to do dynamic backup and redirect I.O. to whatever backup they had, because VM is a backup company. And also the um, other use case here was um, a security audit that you could redirect unwanted I.O. to somewhere else. Uh, to me, the mechanism to redirect I.O. seems like the device mapper being reinvented. Exactly. It's, it's the it is precisely the device mapper approach, but then using device mapper means that your system or your block device had to be on a device mapper device in the first place. If your device is not a device mapper device, you have zero chance, and chance to do this online. You have to remount and re redo everything. It's not my use case, it is what they came up with. Really? Okay. Good, okay. Right, okay, so I mean, I, and that was basically my idea because I never particularly liked that, uh, that patch set, but if you say it's okay, it's okay. Because the alternative would be re-implementing that patch well, set with eBPF. You're saying I did, you didn't like it, so why, why did you not like it? <sighs> because it feels so wrong. So you essentially have to program a redirecting map for individual I.O. into the kernel. That feels so, so wrong. I'd rather have a BPF program where I could just 
do the whole thing by basically create a program which does exactly that, load into the kernel, and that's it. I don't need to come up with a... Yes, I mean, uh, as compared to the block layer thing, that is traceable, really, for individual I.O.? Okay, good. So, yeah, I mean, uh, that was an idea because, as I said, I didn't, didn't particularly like it. If you don't like it, the BPF one, then okay, right, so guess we won't, won't be doing it. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't use BPF for error injecting it. So, um, so if we were to do it just for normal error injection, but then it can't be that hard doing it, can't, can't it? I mean, um, I dabbled in it somewhat, but then I can't claim claim to be an expert here, so question to the expert, uh, to the experts here, would that be a difficult task? What is your stance on that? Should we go for the eBPF approach, or should we just go for the error injection stuff? Um, well, the allow error injection thing that, that yeah. Lewis was referring to already s lets you put an arbitrary BPF program on there, which basically can only modify the return value, if I'm correct. Yes, and that is the thing, because that is precisely wh why it's not going to fly with us because the return value, you will just get a return value if, if the function call itself fails. You can't modify the bio status, uh, status to figure out, uh, to simulate that the hardware returns something odd. And that's what we need to do. Well, if you pick your, the function you're, you're injecting cleverly enough, you can say this, factor out this function that where we're getting the BI status from, set the allower injection in that, and you can do whatever you want to that return value. So, um, yeah, and that, uh, so, uh, so you say it should be, it would be better with doing the allow error injection and sprinkle the entire stack, uh, stack with those functions. If, you're, if you just want to do it with, if you just want it for error injection, I think the mechanisms are mostly there. It, now, I think the fancier stuff you're talking about yeah. was too vague, and I guess since you're kind of describing someone else's use case uh, through your own interpretation, it's kind of hard to have a conversation specifically about that, but if you have specific like use cases that you have or that someone else yeah, here so, can So I mean, my, my, my use case here is indeed error, um, error handling and validating that the error handling we put in place actually does something sensible. So in, in my use case, for instance, I, I want to be able to easily write a block test, for instance, yeah. right, and use shell to basically yeah. just ensure that, you know, when I make, make the block layer do something stupid, it, it actually you know, behaves the way that we expect it to. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that in shell and in as little lines as possible. I don't want to be compiling some BPF program. Okay. So, But jumping in for what we can do with BPF that isn't possible with the other methods that we have right now is BPF gives us the ability to insert injection, uh, insert errors into very specific points like in the transaction commit path or in discard handling or in places where like we want to make sure this exact thing happens and we want to make it happen over and over and over again. Um, and I think BPF is the easiest and best way to do that and just because we can't do it with shell yet doesn't mean we shouldn't be forming it into the kernel. Yeah, it just means that, you know, you're not gonna have as many, you know, block tests, you know, written, that's all, you know, it's just, that's all. It's just, you know, it pick your battles, right? So, um, I, I just think it's a lot easier to write a few lines of shell for testing errors than, you know, writing and requiring writing eBPF programs. It doesn't preclude doing all the things you're talking about, too, right? Well, like, do, it's, it's do an we additional have, test. Do we have, uh, consensus that it might be acceptable to, you know, you sprinkle those macros, for instance, on uh, some block layer functions? Um, I, I'm happy to do so if that's the consensus. Well, that's the consensus. Oh, all right, so what is it then? Uh-huh. Well, Bart, uh, Bart, hey, yes, here. I remember you asking me specifically, you know, uh, when the error handling was adding was being added to add disk, you specifically wished for there to be error handling. Um, so you know, 
the question here is what m methodology do we want moving forward in the block layer? It doesn't seem like we have an answer. If we really don't want, then uh, fine. Let's admit that and never look back. I'm totally in favor of cutting out of that. So yeah. everyone the consensus is. is the consensus is Christoph is just wrong. I'm <laughs> sorry. It, <laughs> this is a dramatically useful thing to add, and <laughs> we can make it less ugly yeah. to the point where it's acceptable to the kernel infrastructure. But it's it's a huge feature. Yeah, so and we don't need to sprinkle it gratuitously. We can you can pick the right place to put it. I I'm really unclear here on what BPF actually brings us for error injection. I did something a lot simpler a while back, and maybe I should resurrect the patch. I, I thought Upstream was doing their own same thing with error injection, but maybe not. Uh, dynamic debug has this cool trick where it turns all your, makes all your PR debug calls dynamically controllable via debug fest. So I just took that idea and used it for injecting faults. There's a, a dynamic fault macro that you pass the string, and anywhere you call it, it'll return true if user space is told it to return true. That's all you need for error injection. And you can control it by the shell, and you can list all the point, all, all the error injection points by a debug FS. So I, maybe there's some, some really big clear advantage to using BPF here, but I, I'm not seeing the connection. So I, I guess here is one example, and let me know if this is something that you can do with, with your thing. Um, we wanted to test a, a failure case where, for whatever reason, the disk failed to write the Butterfest super block, and we wanted to make sure that we didn't lose anything. So we were able to write like a BPF filter that says, if the bio sector is the sector where we were writing the super block, fail the IO, otherwise pass it through. Oh, okay. So you're like matching on. Uh, you can other do like very, very variables. specific things with the BPF error injection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you need to be able to modify the return value, and I think that's what BPF hasn't allowed because the point of the allow error injection macro is that you pick places where you're not going to cause catastrophic failure by just being able to arbitrarily, arbitrarily overwrite return values. You pick this function that we know can fail in a well-defined set of ways, and that's, that's where you're allowed to probe. don't think we could overwrite the BI status from, from the K probe right now. We have to define these error injection points manually anyways. Why do we need to do any crazy overriding of kernel memory from the, from the K probe? You just, from kernel code, if, you're, if error injection is on, then you <coughs> Well, why, why can't you make that dynamic? It does. You, you're doing the stuff based on uh, code coverage analysis, and it doesn't take it adding that many error injection sites to if you're doing this in a reasonable way, you're actually looking what, what you need test coverage for. I, I think we just have to try and see how bad it was before we talked about either finding ways to overwrite BI status or um, you know which trace points, which error injection points we need to add. So in case you're not aware, the block layer already has at least one error injection point, which is yeah. should fail bio, and that covers a lot of cases like this one that I just mentioned. So yeah, it's I guess find the other ones that you care about, Adam, and if it becomes 
too messy to have them everywhere, then we can figure out some dynamic way to do it. But I, I agree that I don't think it's going to take that many to make it useful. Yeah, because I, on that thing, I wasn't quite sure whether it's a good idea to sprinkle stuff on any position where I think we should be able to do something. But yeah, I mean, I, it's like two lines try. of code to add an error injection point. I don't think that's that's a problem. Okay. That's it.